Hello and welcome to the history of the Asgard people. The Asgard started on the planet Othala in the Ida galaxy. Their collected history and culture would span over 100,000 years. They began exploring the outside galaxy around 28,000 BC. At some point, the Asgard began a program of cloning their people and transferring their minds into these bodies as a means of vastly extending their lifespans. At some point in time, the Asgard were hit by a plague that they called Baryon Syndrome, a disease that wiped out 60% of their population and within a generation over 75% of survivors of the disease became sterile and suffered from cellular degeneration. The remaining 10% of the population did not have the necessary genetic diversity to reverse the trend away from genetic breakdown 30,000 years ago. Around this time, an Asgard ship, its crew placed in suspended animation, left Othala. Its navigational computers were either damaged or malfunctioned at some point, and the ship drifted across galaxies, ultimately ending up in the Milky Way. 10,000 years ago, the Asgard made peaceful contact with the Ancients, the Furlings, and the Nox. They also came into conflict with the Gowald. Liberating several groups of humans from the Gowald worlds, the Asgards declared themselves their protectors until their cultures had successfully advanced and threatened the Gowald with their violent retaliations if they attempted to re-enslave the humans. The Vanir, a group of Asgards who did not share their brethren's ethical concerns about experimenting on humans to solve their genetic degradation problems, left the Ida galaxy and traveled to the Pegasus galaxy, where they could continue their experiments, which were able to slow the advance of, but not reverse, their genetic problems. After the ancients discovered that they could not win their war with the Wraith, and left for the Milky Way galaxy, the Wraith attacked the Vanir. The Veneer's intergalactic ships were damaged beyond repair in the first battle, and as they lacked the means to construct new ones, they were stranded in the Pegasus galaxy. In order to survive, the Veneer moved to a toxic planet where the Wraith could not endure. At first, they only needed to use simple breathing apparatuses to survive, but the planet's atmosphere continued to degrade, forcing them to develop armored exoskeletons capable of withstanding the new conditions. Eventually, conditions would become too harsh and they would be forced to venture out into the galaxy again. Recent History Despite the efforts of the Asgard, the Gowald became a great threat to the human population of the Milky Way. The Gowald began taking humans as hosts during this time, which greatly angered the Asgard, who realized humanity had great potential. The Asgard's vastly superior technology was more than a match for the Gowald who were forced to sign a treaty with the Asgard in order to keep from being destroyed. Unwilling to completely give the galaxy over to the Gowalt, the Asgard freed and transplanted humans on various worlds and posed as their protective gods as they felt they were not ready to have their belief system completely stripped away. Accordingly, they devised a series of challenges designed to determine when these people were advanced enough to learn the truth about their protector's nature. To ensure the safety of many of these planets, the Asgard and the Gowald brokered the Protected Planets Treaty. The treaty stipulated that the Asgard would allow the Gowald various benefits, and in return the Gowald would leave the humans of the various worlds mentioned in the treaty alone. The treaty could be expanded to include other worlds if both parties agreed to negotiate. For some time, the Asgard protected these planets with their advanced technology and warships, but the discovery and invasion of the replicators in their home galaxy forced the Asgard to draw away resources that they had been using to enforce a treaty, leaving the planets protected in name only. The long-lost Asgard ship from 30,000 years ago was rediscovered by Asgard scientists. Within it was one perfectly preserved Asgard ancestor. The Asgard scientist Hemdal began research on it since the clone was from a time when their cloning program was not yet irreversible. The Asgard were unable to help Earth directly in fights against the Gowald because of a war with a greater enemy, the Replicators. The Asgard's energy-based weapons were ineffective against Replicators. Human weapons, on the other hand, used simple chemical reactions to drive metal projectiles through kinetic force, 
something the mechanoids cannot defend against. With the aid of SG-1, the Asgards imprisoned all replicators in a time dilation field on the planet Hala. They then collapsed Hala's sun into a black hole in the hopes of destroying the replicators, but some managed to escape and attack the new Asgard homeworld of Orilla. Aegir attacked the ship that dropped out of hyperspace before it could raise its shields. Not all replicators were destroyed, however, and the replicator fifth managed to land on the planet. Colonel Jack O'Neill, with knowledge gained from the Ancients' repository of knowledge, invented a weapon that blocked communication between the replicator cells permanently. Thor was able to construct a larger version capable of affecting an entire planet. The Asgard aided SG-1 when the replicators invaded the Milky Way, but were unsuccessful. Eventually, SG-1 and the Tok'ra Jacob Carter slash Selmak destroyed the replicators with the Dakera superweapon, eliminating them from the known universe. Although the Gowald and the replicators had been defeated, new threats arose such as the Ori. In the face of this, the Asgard continued to provide aid to Earth by providing its technology for development of the Daedalus class and lending them the Asgard engineer Hermoid. The Asgard also participated in critical events such as the Battle of P3Y229. Extinction. Their final attempts to repair their genetic degradation caused by continuous recloning failed, and unwilling to allow their technology to be plundered by other races, the Asgard decided to commit mass suicide and destroy their planet, but not without passing on their legacy. They gave Stargate Command an Asgard computer database containing all of their knowledge and made significant modifications to the Odyssey consisting of all of their most recent technology. As the upgrades were completed, three Ori warships arrived and attacked both Orilla and the Odyssey. The Odyssey fled with one Ori ship in pursuit, while the other two prepared to attack the planet. At that moment, the Asgard caused Orilla to explode, destroying the planet the other two ships, and the Asgard. The Asgard's upgrade to the Odyssey saved the ship and gave the Tori an advantage in the war as the new plasma beam weapons installed on the Odyssey gave the Tori weapons capable of destroying Ori motherships and almost any other ship they came across. A few months after the death of the Asgard, the Atlantis expedition encountered Finier, an Asgard scientist who had been exiled from his people after his test of new weapons resulted in the destruction of an entire solar system. Although Finier was devastated when he learned of the loss of his people, he nevertheless sided with the expedition over the Wraith after Tela assured him that they had only deceived him to spare him the pain. Finier and his warship destroyed a Wraith fleet that was attempting to call the humans of the planet Huron. He was subsequently killed when the Wraith Queen sacrificed herself to mount a suicide bomb run on his ship, but Colonel Samantha Carter was able to take control of his ship and use it to destroy the Wraith Hive ship. The Veneer were encountered in 2008 by the Atlantis Expedition. After the expedition's discovery of Janus's lab, they invaded Atlantis, captured a key component of the Arturo device, and kidnapped Dr. Rodney McKay and Dr. Daniel Jackson. They forced Jackson and McKay to activate the device, rendering the Wraith unable to use their hyperspace drives. The Veneer didn't care about the side effect that the device would cause any activated Stargates to overload and explode. Their plan was foiled when Lt. Col. John Shepard took Katana Labry's traveler ship to the planet and destroyed two of the three Veneer spaceships in battle while the third escaped to hyperspace. The device was shut down by Jackson and McKay and subsequently destroyed by the Daedalus from orbit. Following the loss of the Arturo device, the Veneer began a desperate plan to save the race by forcing ascended Asgard named Ran to return to mortal form, believing with her uncorrupted DNA and eggs they could save their race. Their current bodies were beyond saving by that point but they believed with the right genetic material and enough time and work, they could restore their race to what it was. The team was able to convince them of a different solution and led the Veneer to a shrine on Earth where they were able to communicate with the Ascended and ask for Ran's help. Ran, who previously helped Dr. Elizabeth Weir ascend before returning to her human form, 
listen to their plea and return to mortal form to help them. However, she warns that while she will try, she can't guarantee success in saving the race. Thank you for watching the history of the Asgard. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, thank you. Special thanks to Stargate Fandom for all information you heard today. Bye-bye!